Hello everyone, Frost here. Welcome back to part 2 of the things to expect in Classic WoW. In our previous installment we said that if the video reaches 3000 likes in the first week, we're going to make a follow-up. You guys made the impossible and the clip reached its goal in the first 48 hours. Not only that, but it also reached 100k views in the first week, which is pretty insane for such a small channel. Before we start, I wanna announce that I will be streaming Classic WoW on Twitch, upon release, and maybe even the beta, as my intuition says that we might see it sooner than expected. If you're interested, remember to throw a follow, I'm sitting on 4600 followers, and my current goal is to reach 10,000 before Classic WoW goes live. So without all this further ado, let's explore. Beyond the gates of mighty kingdoms lies a vast, unexplored world. A world of honor. A world of mystery. Danger. A world that is alive. One of the most important aspects in an MMO is to have a world that is always active and thriving. Modern day game developers knew about this and they filled worlds with scripted NPC scenarios, moving chariots and professions that can be done AFK. All this in order to make the world feel more alive. In Classic, however, this is not something artificially inflated, but a naturally occurring ecosystem. Every zone tends to be filled with players, and even after the journey to level 60 is done by the majority of the server, new players keep popping in and old players will level alt, keeping the world busy for the majority of the timeline. Major cities like Orgrimmar or Ironforge are filled with players wishing to display their gear, trying to make an extra buck with professions, training weapon skills and spells, but more important, gold begging, which gets us to our second point. In classic begging for gold happens more compared to other games, maybe because the world is more dangerous and instead of getting ganked in Strangletorn or doing a corpse run marathon, people prefer to be lazy and just ask random strangers for gold. While hanging around in a major city, it is common to get 3 to 4 whispers with, can I have gold please? Some people choose to ignore them and some people choose to pay. I find myself in the second category and you might think that I'm making a mistake, but sometimes I choose to give gold to these poor souls. Kind of accepted that this is part of the game and in order for a beggar to receive gold from me, they have to tell me a good story. Make me shed a tear, tell me about how your mom lets you play only 2 hours per day, tell me about that item that you always wanted and right now it's sitting on the auction house but you're two gold short. Don't come with one gold please, as that just won't work. Remember, the begging hand that does not tell a story, receives no charity. Improvise, adapt, overcome. Every class will be provided with a set of tools to explore and engage this vast world. Some classes have more tools than others, but that's just the way that it is. It is common for players to use spells beyond their original use or what the tooltip says. Mages might use counterspell to prevent a warrior from getting out of combat and charge them. They might also use it to pull a mob. Or use rank 1 frostbolt due to the low cast time just for applying the slow debuff. For healers, managing mana is a really important skill. Using lower rank spells for heals is something that is a must in order to prevent going out of mana and keeping the group alive. Vanish for Rogue seems to be a spell that can get you out of combat and straight into stealth, but it also can be used to dodge a death coil or a nasty pyroblast. When fighting a mage or a hunter in the world, pulling an extra mob on you might prevent you from being shipped or ice trapped. The list could go on, but I think we can get the big picture, now let's move to our next point. Pointless items. As I leveled up through Legion in BFA, I couldn't help notice the sheer amount of rare items obtained on the leveling journey. 
It seemed like every item was powerful and custom made for my class. Every new upgrade, I had to make decisions between item levels, couple of more stats, but in the end there was no real feeling of progression or actual joy of obtaining a rare piece of item, because there were none. In Classic, you will find a lot of items on your leveling journey and beyond, but consider yourself lucky if let's say 10% of these items are good or at least usable for your class. It's very common to find items with stats like strength and intellect, or agility and spirit and so on. Not only that, but quest rewards are predefined and not custom made for your class. Even some of the epic items can be pointless items, such as Dazzling Longsword, the Lion Horn of Stormwind, or even raid items such as Thunderstrike, aka Vendor Strike, and the Shard of the Flame. Not to worry though, the amount of joy when you get an actual good item will be 10 times higher. Some items are really expensive. Speaking of items, among these pointless items there are many rare gems that have high value. A single item could have the value of an epic mount, thus setting you ahead with gold equivalent to weeks of grinding. Some of these might seem non-important or average to a new or returning player, but they can be anything from twink items such as Shadow Fang, Assassination Blade or Pendulum of Doom, random BOE epics such as Freezing Band or Crawl Blade, or the value can be hidden in rare profession patterns such as Crusader, Nine Strength Embracers, Shadow Reflector, and many, many more. If you want to find more information about the more expensive items, check my rare and expensive series on the channel. Often enough, easy profit enthusiasts will try to take advantage of the new players by purchasing these expensive items for a fraction of the price. And to be honest, I cannot judge them. If an item seems different to you, try asking in guild chat if it has any value. Reserving items in dungeons Wanted to keep this point for the end, as it wasn't really a thing in vanilla, but since we're on the topic of items, it makes sense. A trend has been rising recently on the private server community, where players simply reserve loot on dungeon runs. As you might know, some items like Hand of Justice, Iron Foe, Fell Striker or Rare Flask recipes have a very low drop chance and people want to increase the odds of getting them in case they drop by reserving. As we previously said, this was not that popular in vanilla, but I have a feeling that Classic will have the general chat filled with looking for member UBRS, True Strike Shoulders, Reserve. Now, to a certain degree, we used to do something similar back in 2005 by creating a group for a dungeon and inviting zero competition for our gear. And you might ask, is this a bad thing? I don't know, but it could definitely start up some spiced conversations. Nevertheless, you could always avoid joining these groups. The dangers of a real MMORPG The MMORPG genre is built on the foundation of creating an immersive world to which people can be part of and lose themselves in. Vanilla was built on this premise and was advertised as a large dangerous world with no instance zones. Why am I bringing this point up? Well, last time I really played Vanilla was about a year ago. I was leveling a warrior through wetlands and I got so immersed into the game that 4 hours passed by and I didn't even notice. And this can be a big deal, especially for people that have responsibilities, like family, job or other real life things to attend. Hours can pass by like minutes and most of the things you do in Classic take time. A dungeon run can take anywhere between 1 and 4 hours. Attunement quests can take half day or even a full day and don't get me started on progression raids. The point is, remember to take all things into moderation, including classic World of Warcraft. Abundance of Trolls With classic, trolls will come back to the game. And I'm not talking about the troll race, but about your average daily chat troll. Especially if you're leveling in barons. Expect your chat to be filled with people talking about how rich and ripped they are, how their prison experiences changed them forever and made them discover classic WoW. But more often people will go crazy when someone links the legendary Blade of the Trolls. Did anyone say Thunder Fury Blast Blade of the Windseeker? If you're unsure about something in the game, don't make the mistake to ask in Baron's general chat. 
You'll often get a Bible quote or a Scientology guy explaining you about the benefits and merits of becoming a Titan. And if you really don't know where Mankirk's wife is located, ask in Gilchat. Maybe they're gentle. As some of you might see trolls as something bad, I really hope we get some high quality ones back for classic, as they are part of the game. Quest Chains Long quest chains usually reward you with cool, useful and powerful items. And if not, at least you get an item with high value at the vendor. One of the reasons players don't get enough gold to purchase mount at level 40 is because they skip quest chains especially the ones between level 30 and 42. Normally at the end of the chain, there's a weapon or a piece of armor that can sell for 1 or 2 gold. Skip enough of these quests and your gold by the time you reach higher level will be lower. Also, cool gadgets like Dartle's Rod of Transformation are nice to have. Who does not want to transform into a chubby furbolg? Although in order to keep this item you must avoid completing the last part of the chain which kind of goes against the whole point. Closer to level 60, some of the chains will provide pre best in slot items for raid. Items like Eye of Orgrimmar, Fordring Seal, Mark of Fordring, Black Hand's Breath and others. I think we got a good glimpse of the potential behind quest chains, let's move to the next one. Rare mobs are one of the cool unexpected pleasures in Classic. It's such a thrill to be questing or grinding along and see that silver dragon icon around the mob's unit frame. It adds a lot of flavor to the leveling process while moving from zone to zone. They are not as strong as an elite, maybe they hit quite high, but their HP is slightly higher than a normal mob. Basically, anyone could kill them with a bit of patience. A fun fight with an unique mob that will automatically guarantee an uncommon item or, in some cases, rare and special items such as the Pacifier from Logrosh in Alterac Mountains, Tidal Charm from Lord Nasjak in Arati Highlands, or the weird name Songblade from Lord Darkside in Eastern Plaguelands. Apparently, mobs named Lord drop special items. Need to do more research on that. I hope to find some of these rare mobs in my classic WoW adventures, and I hope you can find them too. Professions are expensive to level. Maybe an overstatement, not all trade skills are expensive to level, tailoring and skinning for example might have an easier process as the materials required are at hand while you level. All humanoids will drop cloth and all the beasts will provide leather. But for skills like alchemy or blacksmithing you actually have to move out of your leveling path in order to pick flowers and herbs. You might be able to pick them up from the auction house, but I doubt your funds will be sufficient. This is where the expensiveness comes in. Other skills like engineering and enchanting are pure money sink as they require more complex and rare materials. With enchanting having to upgrade rods in every new important enchant you gain. Some of these rods are not available as not every blacksmith will have them. And if they do, they might charge you a lot for them plus the mats which will set you back from reaching 300 skill. Needless to say this shouldn't stop you from pursuing professions while you're leveling, unless you're on a rush to level 60 for any reason. But not everyone playing vanilla WoW will be on a rush to max level. Some people like to take their time and explore everything the game has to offer. The point is that some professions offer advantages that gold cannot buy, such as making BOP gear for leveling and endgame crafting gear for your guildies and friends, providing resistance gear for the whole iteration of vanilla, making rare and unique weapons such as Sulfuron Hammer and Nightfall, and ultimately making a name for yourself on the server. Maybe I sound a bit conflicting here, but players that will have their profession maxed out by the time they're 60 or shortly after will get priority for the rare recipes that drop across the world and in raids. Raid combat can be boring. Well, not for me, but I guess this is relative. While it's true that some classes have to use one or two spells in their rotation, classic WoW raiding is more than that. There's lots of preparation prior to a raid and different mechanics to pay attention to. Threat per second will be a thing people will have to pay extra attention, as getting slightly overconfident might wipe a 40 man raid. The feeling where a small mistake like pulling an extra pack or over aggroing will keep you alert because there's a big desire to progress 
and hope to obtain loot. There will be no mass dispels, so my best guess is that mages and healers will have to individual click and dispel everyone, as at BlizzCon was announced that addons like the cursive won't work anymore. Picking spells that would conserve mana while trying not to stomp on others, having things like healing assignments to cover certain groups instead of the more free-for-all we have now. In certain fights you might even have to regen cycles where certain healers would stop all healing to get outside of the 5 second rule of regeneration. Now if you come from a modern MMO, more of a hack and slash game, classic raiding might seem a bit boring. But if you manage to get behind all the effort and preparation that goes into it, you'll have a blast. Scammers We already know that classic gold is not that easy to come by require lots of time investment in order to get a decent amount. Some people will be lazy and try to scam other people of their crafting materials. It happened in vanilla and most likely will happen again in classic. You've worked your ass off for the materials required to craft Lionheart helmet and Johnny will just take your mats and log off. You might want to investigate more the people who craft your stuff. Asking guild if anyone knows Johnny see if other people successfully crafted stuff with him and don't get yourself scammed because it will ruin your week. Class imbalance and class identity Not all classes have the same toolset, such as self-heal or silence. Classes are truly unique in what they can do. Some will be more overpowered, but that's just the way that it is. Hopefully, you're good at rock, paper, scissors, because in a way or another it can define the vanilla WoW classes. But not to worry, there are many gadgets and trinkets that provide silence or stun effects, offhands that will heal, grenades from engineering, consumable items such as nets that renders you unable to move, magic dusts that will put a player to sleep for many seconds, and so on. The point is, no matter the class, you can obtain things that will get you an advantage to a point where Caesars might beat rock. Old Class Talents after reaching level 10, the talent window will become available. Each class has to choose between 3 specs or mix match them for a hybrid build. Now, one thing to take in consideration, like we said in our previous point, not all classes were created equally. Some classes might only have one viable spec, and it could be one spec for PvP, one spec for leveling, and one for raiding. Respecking will cost gold, and each time you do it, the cost will increase up to a cap of 50 gold. So that means choose your talents carefully. There are many guides on what works for every class. But if you follow these guides, I strongly recommend reading each talent you click on in order to know exactly what it does, therefore getting a better understanding of your class. Be ready to spend a lot of gold, especially if you're into both PvP and PvE. Discovering the story Compared to other games, Classic will not push the story on you. No cinematic cuts, not that many scripted events, and so on. You will have to discover it yourself. Every zone has smaller stories, such as the story of Defy's Brotherhood, the Bride of the Embalmer, Legend of Stalvan, and so on. Each small story explains why the current region is cursed and past events that happened there. By the time you're close to max level, bigger stories uncover, such as the story of Onyxia, Tyrion Fordring, the Dark Iron Dwarves of Blackrock Depths, and if you take your time to follow the stories, you will reach new levels of immersion. Some of the storylines will also provide item rewards that will be used as pre best in slot gear. I mean, if you already have to do them, why not figure out what the fuss is all about? Murlocs these small iconic creatures are to be feared. According to Bran Bronzebeard, Murlocs are smarter than what other races think. Smart enough not to let anyone know. They are bipedal, amphibious humanoids, mostly residing along coastlines, lakeshores and riverbeds. It is said that they evolved from tadpods, growing legs over time. Now, you might try to avoid them and stay safe in your town. Orgrimmar, or whatever is the place you call home. But if you really want to stay safe, the true power resides outside, eagle scouting these murlocs and hunting them down as they are known to carry items that will grant you 
extra power. These are 17 more things to expect in Classic WoW. To be honest, I'm a bit scared about a potential part 3 because I'm running out of interesting things to present. Nevertheless, I'm still going to make a challenge. If this clip reaches 5000 likes in the first week, we're making a part 3 follow-up. And please, if you have any ideas about things to expect in Classic WoW floating through your mind, please make them known in the comments down below, because I need your help. Thanks for watching, until next time, stay frosty.